Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. I got to be down here low because Fish yells at me when I get too loud. Uh, and we just want to, before we get into the podcast today, we want to talk about our sponsor this month. Our sponsor is a returning sponsor and good friends at Figurosity. Figurosity.com is a website where you can go and check out their custom made 3D models of all body shapes, styles, dressed, undressed, different body shapes, ninja weapons, dancing, whatever. And you can do your figure drawing right from the website. Uh, it is free to a certain extent. And then there's also a, a paywall that allows you access to more content. You can change the angle of the camera on the model. You can change the lighting. It's a phenomenal website. Great stuff. Great way to hone your art skills. And also, uh, because Figurosity is great people, they gave us a coupon code. And when I said, well, what is the coupon code? They said, how about Chicken Smuggler? And I'm like, great, let's do that. So the coupon code this month is Chicken Smuggler. We'll get you $5 off your purchase, which essentially is a free month because it's a little over $5 a month. So uh, thank you to Figurosity for giving our listeners a free month of online 3D modeled figure drawing. And uh, so make sure you check it out, Figurosity.com. And now let's get into the podcast. Yeah. Okay, uh, welcome back to the Inebriart Podcast, Inebriites. This is Andy, and we are back again at the Craft Beer Cellar on Main Street in Plymouth. I apologize if I sound a little different. My voice is kind of... As of this morning, it wasn't uh, existent at all, so this is better. That's an improvement. Um, And our guest tonight, I actually came across online somehow, and I can't even really remember. Uh, It's Ed Smith. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're a... Ca- you're the caricature guy? I am the caricature guy, yes. Um, and you're right here from Plymouth. So how how did you become the caricature guy? Like, Well, I guess the answer to that is registering a domain name. But um, I became the caricature guy after doing this for like 25 years or so. Uh, I started doing caricatures when I was actually still in high school. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I got hooked up with this this company that had caricature locations at malls and oh actually yeah had a, yeah yeah like they used to have like the booths and, yeah they yeah. had like push carts yeah and they also had one in faniel hall which was like the cream of the crop location sure you know, with yeah. all the tourists yeah but uh they sent me up to a mall in new hampshire on my first day at work but uh yeah so that's how i got started i always drew in high school and before and kind of swung it into uh something to do for work now did you do the kind of traditional path did you go to art school or I did. I went to art school for a little while. Uh, I went to mass art. Yeah. Um, didn't quite make it a year. Okay. And uh, dropped out and pursued some other some other paths. And uh, you know, I did some continuing ed stuff and graphic design after mm-hmm. that there. But uh, no, I didn't didn't graduate. Didn't get a degree. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I'm sure everyone's real familiar with caricatures. You know, small bodies, big heads, right. exaggerated features. Um, what are what are some of the challenges behind that? Like I've done them myself. Oh yeah. Um, and to me, even drawing people in general, the hardest thing is capturing a likeness mm-hmm. because we look at people all day long. We don't realize how good we are at spotting likenesses, mm-hmm. but hard translating them. Right. Uh, well, tell me, how did you, what was your background? What did you do? Did you like events and stuff? or did you Um, do so I used to do, I used to have a comic book shop. Uh huh. And so I used to do comic cons even before they were like Comic Con. Mm-hmm. And when I got divorced, that kind of went away. And a friend of mine's like, "Why don't you do the cons selling artwork?" And a lot of it's kind of you know your own interpretation of you know whatever superhero. And then I had kind of I was doing one, and uh, Malcolm McDowell was there. Mm-hmm. So I thought it'd be funny to draw Charlie Brown like he was in Clockwork Orange. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, 
had I known at the time, I might have gone in a different direction because then it became like half my table was Charlie Brown is this, Charlie Brown is that. Because people were like, oh, can you draw him like this? Can you draw him like that? <laughs> um, you had a niche already. Yeah, and yeah. it kind of fell into that. And then I had done some uh, similar ones that were uh, for The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, get yourself drawn as a zombie. So that's kind of... Ah, there you go. Yeah. And, yeah, so uh, I was drawing people over to your booth and, and getting them in there. Yeah, and, you mm-hmm. know, maybe they'd buy a print or maybe they'd get themselves drawn as a zombie. Right, right, right. And uh, some of them I had really good success with, others I didn't. And it also became like a very um, common caricature theme at Comic-Cons. There's like at least two booths now that of I know. Caricature guys? Of caricature, caricature guys. Wow. And, and some of them specifically for draw you as a zombie and others are just, you know, draw you as a caricature. There's, actually, there's probably more than two now. But. So you're not getting any royalties out of that or anything? No, I, I wouldn't. I'm not laying claim to it. It was my idea <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. People seem to really enjoy it. Yeah. It's a unique take-home remembrance of it yeah and uh and it, it and it seems to be like a uh, a very tourist type of thing right i mean pretty much anywhere where there's tourists you can you can make a living provided you can find a place to to set up I and mean, mostly what i do is i do events yeah like i do weddings and bar mitzvahs and corporate gigs and um some colleges and universities and stuff but uh you know starting out you know after i i did end up working at faneuil hall for a few years and yeah. that was like talk about getting a likeness that was totally boot camp you know what i mean it's like i don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people go through there in any given month right and we had a pretty prime spot so it would be hawking and trying to get attention and once you get drawing then you've got a crowd right so yeah yeah not only are you drawing and trying to capture a likeness of you know person after person but you've got 40 50 people standing behind you, you asking know, watching questions yeah yeah, they're asking questions, and then the other thing that they do is, for some reason, they think that just because you're drawing, you can't hear them, or you're not there. Oh, really? Because, yeah, because yeah. they'll stand behind you going, oh, look, he like he's drawn like, his face. Like, you know, oh, look. He, oh, he's he drawn both like, eyes. Right, yeah, and yeah. they just narrate the whole experience, yeah. and then you'd be like, uh, that doesn't look like him. Or like, <laughs> that doesn't look like her. It's like, dude, I am sitting right here. I yeah. can totally hear you, you know? But um, sounds like my daughter was there. That's how my daughter like. Critic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when she was real little, um, I, I wouldn't buy her, uh, coloring books. I'd be like, "Well, what do you want?" And I'd draw something, uh-huh. then do it in, over in Sharpie, and then she would color it in. Right. right and right. she'd sit across from me. She'd be like, "No, he's got two arms." I'm like, "I know he's got two and two eyes." I'm like, "I know what he looks." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get it down after a while. Yeah. But um, so yeah, that was you know you definitely just through the the trial by fire of just having to do it, you know. Um, and it's funny because uh, my then wife went to um, Museum of Fine Arts, School of Museum of Fine Arts, and she was a really good painter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing these gigs. Like, we could do it together. You know, we could book gigs, and you can, I can teach you some tricks how to draw caricatures. Yeah. You know? And she could really, like, she could paint. She could do classical, you know, like, really good artwork. And um, so I ended up taking her out actually to Faneuil Hall. And uh, I'm like, here's, you know, here's the basics. It's got to be quick. You got to get this. And, um, there was a tour bus full of kids, like high school kids, who had come through Faneuil Hall for like a you know a field trip, and one of the kids you know scraped up his twenty bucks and sat down and had her draw him. Yeah. So I was like, all right, let's see how she does. So, uh, <laughs> so she drew the kid. It took a long time. It was a little rough, and she gave it to him. She's like, ah, oh, that was my first one. And the kid leaves and uh, comes back like twenty minutes later, and he's like, uh, hey, um, can I get my money back? And she's like, no, we don't, we don't do refunds. You yeah, know? that's the rule of the, the cart. He's like, well, you forgot one of my ears. <laughs> Shut up, really? <laughs> oh, that's left awesome. Off, left off an ear. So, yeah. as long as you get all the body parts on there, and then, then you can, then get, you, can yeah. you know, there's a no refund, no right. exchange policy. But, uh, but yeah, so it's not, you know, you get good at it over time, though. I mean, I don't know how how much you kept doing it, but I'm sure you. Uh, I'm definitely out of practice. Yeah. Um, but for one thing, I I. We run them now, and I try to do them. I don't. We run a, a daily drawing challenge through our Facebook page. Yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. And um, I had started it personally at one point, and uh, I would pick a theme every month. And one month I did caricatures, so I would just go, you know, uh, random famous people, and, and and some came out pretty good, and some not so much. And just like you know, and that's one thing I try to, you know, tell people. It, it's art is more learning techniques and practice mm-hmm. and, and people tend to 
think it just comes like I woke up and could draw, you know, and it's, right. And it's like, it, it's not, it, it's a, it's the more you draw, the better you're going to get. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And people, you know, I'm sure like if you've drawn when you were a kid and stuff, people are always mesmerized and fascinated by it, which, which is great. Cause it yeah. is a thing like you don't have any control, I guess, over the raw, I don't know if you call it a talent or not, but you can either draw or you can't, yeah. but that's only the starting point, right? Like you have to keep working at mm-hmm. it. And, um, you know, so people will say, you know, like, how do you do this? I'm like, well, I do it because I've just kept doing I've, it. I've done it. And, you know, yeah. someone explained to me a trick that, you know, explains, oh, the thumb is more like a chicken drumstick. And you're like, oh, and it kind of clicks in your brain. And that's how you can kind of interpret it at that right. point. And then, you know, suddenly now you can draw thumbs. And it right. usually comes in like jumps and leaps like that mm-hmm. where something clicks and you, you pick up something and your drawings improve mm-hmm. and then even from gig to gig i mean sometimes i draw and um i'm just not in the zone i'm not drawing well oh and sure other yeah. times you know it's everything just is going great and i can't you know people always talk about that being in the zone thing and you can't control it but um it makes a world of difference uh whether you are or not in the zone you know and like when i hand someone a drawing if I'm not, if I didn't like it, I find like I'll hand it to them. I'll look away. Like yeah. I don't want to see. The you don't reaction. want to see their reaction, right? Yeah. But you know, a lot of times, you know, there's nothing like when you do the big reveal. You know, you, you have that person sitting across from you for five minutes or whatever, right. and they're uncomfortable and they're nervous and they're and some people. And are, this guy's staring at me. Yeah, yeah. super nervous. And uh, you know, that's actually a big part of being a professional character artist is making people at ease. Yeah, you know what and I mean. And that's so, something a l- more. In your field, um, now I'm not going to lie, when I did it at conventions, I totally cheated. I would snap a picture of them and be like, come back in 20 uh-huh, minutes. Uh-huh, yeah. um, just because it wasn't space for mm-hmm. them to sit. Um, but you are more performance, well, not more, but as much performance as art, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's the experience. Yeah, that an illustrator is going to like right. be behind a drawing board and then reveal you're right. sitting across. You're going to make small talk. Right. You're going to have those people talking behind you. It's all like you are involved. Right. And I do think that that's a big part of, you know, the product is the drawing, but it is the process that mm-hmm. that you're providing for people. And, you know, I mean, I've worked with guys who are just grumpy as hell and they're just, you know, kind of mean or whatever. I genuinely like talking to people. You know, right. I, mean, I love that like five minute conversation. And it's also, it is necessary because it's a very intimate thing mm-hmm. to sit across from someone, like you said, and stare at them yeah. and, and look at them, you know, so. Try that with anyone you're not drawing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> they but will leave. Yeah, yeah, they will. Or they'll call the cops. And yeah. Either way, you know, you're, you got some problems. But no, just that ability to, you know, I mean, first of all, they sit down and they don't know what to expect. And you have to remember that as the artist, that they've probably never been drawn before. Right. You know? So I just say like, hey, what I need you to do is like, just look in my general direction. Right. So now they know, like, do I have to stare at you? Do I have to yeah. look at whatever? It's like, just look in my general direction. Right. And then I start talking to them. You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, so, you know, what's your story? What do you do? Where are you from? And then it's just a conversation for a few minutes. And then there's that big reveal, like I was saying before. And when you show somebody and you see that like recognition and yeah. that appreciation and laugh, you know, oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it's all worth it right there, you know. Plus the paycheck is is good too. But do you ever get <laughs> yeah. that reveal and someone's <laughs> like gets mad, like my ears aren't that big, or because yeah. the whole thing is to exaggerate yeah. what makes them them. Yeah, and what I try to do is like I try to do a flattering likeness, right? Yeah. So I try to get a resemblance, you know, mm-hmm. and again. There's no pencil. There's no sketching. There's no good lighting. You know. It's oh, do just, you go straight to marker? Right, yeah, right with a brush pen. Oh, you know, okay. so I pull out a sheet of cardstock and a black brush pen and uh, and just dive in. You know, so you really you have to commit to it, and it goes how it goes. You know yeah. What I mean? So, um, but I try to get this flattering likeness so that it, it looks like you. It's, it looks enough like you that you recognize yourself in it. Um, and I don't. I don't really mess with people. Like I don't really like exaggerate unattractive features or anything. Right. it's a flattering yeah like this you know and uh you know you can accomplish a lot like with even like the bodies that you draw mm-hmm. like if i don't if i'm drawing like a, a woman say and like i you know i draw okay with the face but if i i'm like what do you like to do you know if you're like i like, I like to go to the beach I'm like okay great so i'm gonna draw them standing in the water in like a, a bikini right right and once you do that once and like oh my god i look so beautiful like i look so hot you know like, <laughs> and then i swear to god after that like every person comes up it's like i don't know i like the beach yeah <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all it's the like, same thing yeah it's just yeah. that whole like i don't know the flattering uh flattering aspect of it people I, I feel like and this might be 
sexist, but I feel like women are going to be more apt to want to look good in the final piece where guys are yeah, like whatever yeah, yeah, yeah they don't they don't care and it's funny like i did an event the other day and uh it was the mass lobsterman association okay so you can imagine it was like 95 percent guys I'm right like, you know damn this is a slow gig because you know guys will sit down and they'll get drawn and you know obviously depends on the person but if i'm at a wedding or whatever it's always the the woman in the couple that's bringing the guy over the guy over me like drawn <laughs> Yeah, but, like, uh, yeah, I'm like, all right, so this is proof left to their own guys will not voluntarily sit down to get drawn. Right. Maybe yeah. by another guy. Yeah. Maybe if there was a, I don't know, we're, we're uncovering the whole sexism of caricatures, but. Yeah, I'm sure if there was a, like, a hot chick doing caricatures, you'd be like, oh, I'll get my picture drawn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so you keep talking about five minutes, mm-hmm. and that's got to be part of. Uh, maybe not your corporate gigs or your events, but if you're doing, you know, Faneuil Hall got to be all about time because mm-hmm. if you can make 20 bucks for five yeah. minutes as opposed to yeah an hour or whatnot yeah so i mean i haven't been there in a long time but that deal was like commission based so we it was like you know it was, it was piece work you know what right. i mean like you get paid a unlivable hourly wage and then you would make a commission on every drawing so so it was all about cranking them out about, quickly yeah. as possible yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean the company that owned that push guard was paying insane rent oh, so i can't uh, imagine you know, what that would cost you got to yeah. justify the economics of it but yeah, I mean, now I really am a, probably about five minutes for a finished caricature. You yeah, know? And black and white. Or, pretty good. Yeah, I mostly yeah. work black line. Like, uh, I used to use ad markers, mm-hmm. and genuinely, they were like killing Former me. sponsor. Yeah, oh, yeah? yeah Shark yeah. Pack ad markers were? Uh, ad markers oh, was yeah? a former oh, sponsor. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, I really enjoyed their product a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, the fumes and like that would really get to you after a while. I mean, yeah. You'd leave a gig and just have this pit in your stomach that felt like hunger, but it was actually like dizziness and, and poisoning. Yeah, <laughs> slowly yeah. dying. So, uh, I really like, um, uh, oh man, is it, I think it's Prismacolor makes a woodless colored pencil drawing stick. Oh, yeah. They're not super easy to come by. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, and they look just like pastels. So a lot of oh, times, okay. like, you know, I asked for them for Christmas one year, and someone got me pastels, and you're like, oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's just basically a um, the inside of a, a colored pencil in pastel form. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, I, I end up using uh, Copic or Copic, however you pronounce yep, it. Yep, those markers. are nice. Too, those yeah. are good to get, like, that watercolor look. Mm-hmm. But mostly I do black line, and, you know, that's, I think, in the absence of color, like when people don't think that's an option, yeah. no one ever complains about that you can get a lot of right you know and uh, i find with the, the copic ones mm-hmm. i did the uh i used for the zombie ones you know because even just a little bit of gray tone mm-hmm. instead of like actual that color feeling of death yeah it gives it yeah <laughs> you know people people loved it throwing a little uh-huh. you know red a little bit here and there or something yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> um so what kind of uh brush pen do you use uh, i use the tombow dual brush yeah. pen I've never used the pointy side of it. I always just use the brush use side. Use the brush so. side. And, uh, you know, I've got hundreds of thousands of those lying in, in my wake. Um, but, yeah. I mean, I can't even begin to think how many how many drawings I've done, you know, over the years. It's, you know, tens of thousands. And this is just your full-time gig now? Is this No, it's no? Just actually just part. I mean, there was a time where it's all I did. Yeah. But, um, now it's just a part-time thing. It's like a side gig. Uh, I'll do, you know, maybe three or four, uh, yeah. So seven maybe gigs a month. Yeah. And, um, you know, summers are way busier and, and all that. But, yeah, it's part of what I do. So how did you translate from doing kind of the uh, tourist thing to a corporate gig? Like how did how mm-hmm. did that come about? Yeah, well, that company that I worked for, you know, at some point I realized the economics of it where, yeah. you know, they had that push card and then they would also send us out on events and they were sending us out on tour. There was probably like 10 of us that worked for this agency yeah. and they would, they had a lot of connections at colleges, especially in, you know, universities around the country. So they would send us out on tour, you know, for a week or two. And the longest one I did was pushing three weeks where, you know, you'd have an itinerary and then say, you're going to go to SUNY Albany and on Thursday. And then by Friday afternoon, you have to be here. And by Sunday, you have to be in West Virginia. And by, oh, geez. Yeah. Now, did you and, have to drive all these yeah, places? Yeah. Ugh. And uh, they pair you up with another artist. And that was always uh, uh, luck of the draw who you're going with. But yeah, and they'd rent a little shitty little compact, um, rent a car and put you up in borderline sketchy hotels. And But it was great. I mean, I was like 20 
I don't know, 22 or 3, something like that, and you just roll into a college town, find the school, find hang out where you're drawing. Then hang out at a college bar. all day Absolutely. in your 20s. Yeah, yeah that and then go to the bar and then figure out when you had to be in the next place and, you know, just make your way to that next school and, and do that. But um, anyway, so and eventually I realized that they were charging, you know, four or five times, you know, the hourly rate that they were paying us. Right. And, uh, and I just said, you know, there's no reason I can't do this myself. And, yeah. You know, and make a business of it so that's how i started my own my own thing and uh i just built a site and you know and i had some relationships but um and by this point a lot of the guys that i had started with had also done the same thing so mm-hmm. we have this like community of probably 10 of us 15 of us around the boston area i'm i'm pretty much the only one that's focused on south shore and cape and the islands and stuff yeah um so when you need someone you can still right. kind of yeah yeah if you have a big gig you can call someone in and you, you know, don't know scott hamilton do you I know the name. Yeah. Yeah. Where is he? Is he in Western Mass? Uh, I think yeah. so. Western uh-huh. or Northern. Well, there's like all these, uh, like there's a convention. I think the Nose puts it on or something like that. The yeah. Nose is like the, the caricature uh, union. Un- yeah. Because <laughs> when I first met him, he's like, oh, I'm the, I don't remember, he, uh, some committee member of. You know, is he with the nose? New he England caricature, something, something. Yeah, that might be the nose. Yeah. But yeah, they have a conference and and uh, like a convention and stuff. I've never gone, but um, but they're a, they're a good group, and um, you know, and then there are these websites that like uh, get all the artists to list on their site mm-hmm. by by state, and then clients can log into this website and find people. I don't I don't do that either. I just build you know build my own clientele, and you know, I get a lot of repeat calls a lot of repeat gigs and stuff and uh you know party planners will book me and you know it's good it's uh i never know where work comes from you know i get a ton of leads through my website i, did, right. I guess i did good seo that's the other thing i do is marketing and um Ugh, so yeah seo <laughs> <laughs> drives it drives a lot of uh a lot of traffic a lot of business so it's good and uh, you know i really like doing it and it beats you know a real job and it beats you know bartending or whatever that i can definitely um have a better time and make as much money doing caricatures as i could anything else on the side you know? yeah so. are there any gigs that are, are like a real drag that you're just like oh it's one of these again <laughs> i gotta do another funeral well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know there's, there's a couple things come to mind two uh two things that are really difficult is there's this trend and i don't know how it got started but whoever came up with it you know should pay but these overnight post-prom post-graduation parties oh yeah where they, yeah, yeah, they yeah lock the kids up yeah. in the school yeah and it sounds like a really good idea and it's all the parents of the seniors who plan it yeah but the idea is you know all the kids show up at their school usually after graduation or prom at like 11 at night and they have to stay until like six in the morning right so they get to draw safe yeah yeah so they're not out drinking and driving but um so I take these gigs every year and I find myself at like three thirty in the morning, you know, drawing in oh, a shitty metal chair in a gymnasium in yeah. high school. I'm like, what? You know, but I just got a call yesterday. And I took the gig. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're doing it, you're like, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm never doing yeah. this again. Yeah. And then, and then, um, other gigs that are difficult and not all of them, but my experience was, um, I got really tired of the, the bar mitzvah circuit. Okay. Um, just because there's that two years of these kids lives, um, where they have gone to, you know, 20, 30, 40 bar mitzvahs and they've seen 20, 30, 40 caricature artists and Uh, all their friends are having bar mitzvahs and they're not impressed and now at this point they're like messing with you. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I literally drew this this girl one time, and uh, and she came up, and I drew her, and then she went away, and she came back with another friend. She said, "Can I get drawn again?" I'm like, "Well, you know, there's like 150 kids here. I have to draw everybody once, and then I can see if I can draw you again." And she took the character that I just drawn for her like 10 minutes and ripped it up right in front of my face. Like, wow. Ripped it into pieces. And I'm like, oh, my God. What a brat. But some of them, man, like I did one at the uh, the Boston Harbor Hotel. Is that the mm-hmm. one with the big arch like right off the expressway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. By Rose Wharf or whatever. And uh, I've also done a lot of real high-end weddings, surprisingly. And this, essentially a 13-year-old birthday party right was bigger than like the nicest wedding i've ever done and i was sitting there going holy shit like i can't believe like my parents would never do this for me like this is amazing you know black tie 
you know, a real huge. Now, do you event. have to wear a black tie? No, I always underdress for this. <laughs> but uh, but at the end of the thing, I'm like, holy shit, like that was amazing. That was really amazing. And then they make an announcement saying the boat's here, and it's like the spirit of Boston or like some harbor cruise thing. And everybody yeah. went on the boat and like, and you're like, this isn't even the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's like this thing was the pre-party. So, um, but yeah, I kind of those 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 were rough just because the the crowd was all these kids who you know didn't appreciate <laughs> what i was doing but um yeah those those two gigs are rough there's yeah. a common theme there kids man i guess maybe i don't like kids i don't know maybe i get it i get it. and it's not only kids it's that like uh junior high to yeah, high school age, age right? where they're That's extra right. douchey yeah, yeah it can be yeah it's like <laughs> i know you can't hit me i'm like mm, <laughs> not my dad do you <laughs> um have you had any like weird connections like have you like run into met someone famous doing this like mm. yeah actually i had a really a couple i have met a couple of famous people um drawing i had a really weird experience which i think is not so much character related as it is maybe like i don't know earth like spiritual or whatever i don't know but um i had done a gig at the NB- the local nbc affiliate um like one of the they were shooting a morning show or something and while i was there all the big news was that carly simon was in the building okay so i'm like okay cool so they bring her in and you know introduce and i'm like oh let me draw you and she's like no i gotta go i gotta do my thing so i'm like oh cool i met carly simon so the next day i'm in faneuil hall and i'm drawing a uh a group of kids Mm -hmm. and this one girl sitting in front of me and i'm drawing her and she had this really huge smile yeah i'm thinking to myself oh she actually kind of looks like carly simon and then as i was drawing her um I'm like, wow, she does look like Carly Simon. It's just this weird thing. And I heard one of the kids behind me say to another boy that was standing next to her, "Um, that looks like your mom. And I'm like, well, who's your mom, Carly Simon? And he's like, actually, yeah, it is. (laughs) (laughs) And it was Ben Taylor, Carly Simon, and James Taylor. That's funny. So that is really weird. So uh, brush with greatness. uh, And he was 15, 16, too, at the time. Yeah. But... um, and then also this other time I was drawing this guy and I didn't know who he was, but obviously the the crowd around me did because everyone was like, hey, champ, what's going on? And it turns out it was uh, Vinny Pazienza, who was like a famous boxer. Uh, I wouldn't, boxer. I I wouldn't know either. I don't know. You know, it's boxing season. Yeah. But uh, so that was it. Now, I think there are a few other few other people who were like low level. Yeah. You know, yeah. celebs. Those but, sort of famous people. Yeah, semi-famous. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, uh, yes, that that quality. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, if someone was interested in learning caricatures, because mm-hmm. it's kind of, I don't want to say it's counterintuitive, it's a, it's different than, because if you're trying to draw photorealistic, you're trying to get it as close as possible, mm-hmm. where this, you're kind of trying to... Simplify rep- it, Yeah, think. represent yeah. it, but mm-hmm. not be exact. So, like, what is there, like, a tip or trick? Is there kind of, like, an exercise that you could suggest? Well, first, you got to get both ears always. That's rule number <laughs> Two one. Ears, Two ears, got it. Two ears, that's What about the eyes? Point. Can you leave one of those off? Uh, generally, <laughs> <laughs> you have to include all the facial features. Um, honestly, it is just uh, being willing to suck for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, if you do it, if you're trying to make money doing it or doing it on public, you have to be willing to suck publicly, which is not easy. No. You know? no. And, uh... And just keep doing it. I mean, there are, like, honestly, I consider myself, yeah, I'm not always that favorable towards most of the stuff I do, but, like, I think I'm I'm good, like, I'm adequate. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I don't feel embarrassed charging people to draw them. But there are guys that are just, just amazing. You know, they've taken the art form, you know, to an art form. I mean, right. they really are amazing character artists. And some of the guys I know, and then there's a lot of really great working people and to me that's just a style of illustration that's rooted in caricature you know what i mean yeah. i don't i don't even think they're in the same the same league but basically just keep doing it you know like when kids will ask me you know how like how do you draw so good and i'm like well you like to draw and they'll say yeah i'm like well me too but i just never stop yeah so don't, don't ever stop people people say that to me like oh wow you draw you know really well or whatever and i'll be like well i've been doing it like 40 years right. so you'd think i'd get okay at it right yeah. yeah, but that is the key, right? Is just don't stop. Just yeah. keep doing it, you know? Yeah. So um, are you the type of person to draw every day even though it's kind of your job? Like, yeah. are you, or do you kind of lose – does it lose some of that shine because mm-hmm. it's it's a job? Yeah. I really generally don't draw 
uh, unless I'm working. I do a lot of design, you know, yeah. like web design and like print design stuff. Um, so I, I mean, I'm always doodling and messing around, but I really don't sit down and draw um, hardly at all. Anymore. Kind of for you anymore? Yeah. I mean, I used to, uh, I used to have a comic strip that I did um, related to a business. I, I, I used to do web design early mm-hmm. days and, and this company was starting up and uh, their whole brand was like, cartoon based like comic based Mm -hmm. business it was a golf equipment company oddly enough but this was very early days of the web and uh um, was it uh nevada boss no okay that's the only my dad was a huge golfer and i just remember they had like a character character they did uh and then uh, yeah rock bottom golf was another one but uh the idea was to the guy who owned the company was very you know visionary creative business guy and Mm -hmm. he wanted the website to be an experience so we created this fake uh cartoon based golf shop and um so i actually worked with that company for like 14 years but early on uh i had a comic strip that i was doing monthly so yeah um you know that was drawing under a deadline and then doing caricatures but um you know i'll draw with my kids and stuff but i really don't i i want to go to your uh your life drawing class. life drawing, life drawing. first monday third drawing, wednesday yeah. of every month yeah new world tavern and new world tavern That's, start that time 7 good. p.m yeah but I definitely drew a lot, you know, in school. And, I mean, talk about, like, you know, six-hour life drawing classes at yeah. Mass Art were crazy. You know, it was a great. Ours are shorter and there's more beer. Uh-huh. That's all. <laughs> I don't think there's any beer. There's probably a lot of weed in my uh, yeah. in my classes. But, I don't know. Uh, th- yeah, it's legal now. There's weed at ours, too. <laughs> um, now, do you guys, are they clothed models at the? Yeah, yeah. because it's at a restaurant. Right. Yeah. And um, but we we have now worked it out where we have I'd say like um, we're probably looking at three times this year we'll do like an actual nude one uh-huh. um, so we have to find a separate location um, so we have to like cover the, the windows y- with um, draperies and no, not, put no, up caution tape not, outside not so far yet <laughs> but uh, well we did it at Plymouth Memorial Hall uh-huh. last year as part of Art Week and that was just way too cost prohibitive. Um, and so then through talking to people, uh, we did our fall one at um, the Mayflower Society House. Uh-huh. That's which, a great building. It's a gorgeous yeah. building. Yeah. And it was so cool during, because, you know, we'd take a couple breaks, like everyone just wandered around the mm-hmm. house. So I think what we're going to do this time is, um, you know, we start with two-minute drawings and then five-minute drawings, 10 minutes, mm-hmm. and like a 20-minute. I think we're going to, like, change rooms. Oh, yeah. So kind of like it, you know, give everyone the real. You know, we're in that super cool house. Yeah, might as well yeah. might like as well take it in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we're planning that. F- we want to do it probably July. So we got to like get with them and book a date. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, it, huh. It's it's been a lot of fun. And it, it someone suggested it to me, and I'm like, they're not going to let us bring in a naked woman mm-hmm. or man. Or man. Mm-hmm. We have a hard time getting men <laughs> models. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> That used to be all we'd get when I was in art school. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so weird. It's like we just have trouble finding them. Uh-huh. Um, it, it's funny that people like that goes so far back. I mean, drawing from the figure is, yeah. is, is so old. And I remember when I was in high school, um, what was the Art Institute of Boston, I think, had yeah, Saturday okay. studio sessions. And they would pick almost like that scholastic art thing that they used to do in, in high school, like those awards. It was like a similar program. So they picked a bunch of kids to go into the Art Institute of Boston on Saturdays and draw from the from the model, from the figure. And um, I got selected, and it was like a huge honor, right? So I went in there and had my big thing in newsprint. And my mom is like, you know, super like Boston Irish Catholic, yeah. know, or whatever. So a couple weeks in, she found my, my newsprint pad with my life drawings in it. Right, right, right. A bunch of gesture drawings on the first few pages, stick figures, and then yeah. we would have, you know, like 30 minutes, 60-minute six, drawings, whatever. And uh, and she just freaked out and like that's pornography. <laughs> <laughs> and went up to the school. It's the statue yeah. of David. <laughs> yeah, she went up to my school and talked to the director of art, who was like I was oh, super man. close with, and uh, and she just flipped out. I'm like, okay, that's. Did you go to school here in Plymouth? Uh, no, I went to school in Braintree. Okay, I grew up in Braintree and then started moving south when I having kids and got all the way down here and I'm done moving. Man, this is where I went. Plymouth yeah. is great. Oh, I love it here. Yeah, it's so it's, great. It is. It's getting better and. It's, it's good as it is. I mean, just everyone here is so welcome, mm-hmm. and, and I go on all the time about it. But we just, as part of Winterfest, hung a, a art show at uh, the um, Plymouth Arts mm-hmm. Center for the Arts, mm-hmm. and they're just like, "Why don't you do this?" And I'm like, 
what no we're not those guys right. we're like the drunken yeah. idiots from across the uh-huh. street and they're like no that's cool yeah um <laughs> so yeah and and like letting us in the mayflower society house it all just kind of you know they're like yeah let's do it let's right. let's give it a try and see what happens mm-hmm. and no and i think it's great that that you're doing all the stuff that you're doing and like it's part of the reason why you know i wanted to talk to you and and just like so many people and i feel like there's still so much more under the surface you know I mean, there's so much creativity and people oh yeah want to do cool stuff yeah and, you know, I mean, I just love that. You can feel it, like, bubbling under the surface, you know. Um, and I just want to see more of that. Yeah, I feel, happen, it definitely hasn't know? peaked. No. Um, there's yeah. so much more going on. Right. Yep. And the the th- my concern is that once 2020 hits, mm-hmm. the kind of people in charge take their eye off of it. And, and Why you think some of the stuff is because I, of? I feel like there's a lot of push. A lot of energy. Because of the 2020 thing. Uh-huh. But um, there's a lot of... And I mean, like, kind of like political town people. Mm-hmm. But there's still people like um, I don't know if you know uh, Andrew Bertari, who runs um, the Plymouth Cultural District. Mm-hmm. I mean, that guy. You could be like, Hey, Andrew, I want to do like a 40 foot statue, and be like, Oh, cool. Let's see if we can do like just right, right, right. anything you crazy like, idea yeah. you come up with. He's like, Yeah, let's try and make that work. You mm-hmm. know. Um, so there's still a lot of that, mm-hmm. and I think. I think the people will continue on. I just hope the town still supports right, it. Right, right. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, we had those lobsters. Mm-hmm. I think there's something else coming on down the line. Um, they did murals under the bridges in the park, yeah. Yeah. which I haven't even had a chance to look at. But mm-hmm. um, So th- there's definitely a lot of love for the art community here. Mm-hmm. I think it's only going to yeah, get better. Yeah, and there's the music side, too. There's oh, yeah. There's a shit ton of stuff going on. I mean... And Thursday is at, at New World or you know, Uncle John's Banjo. is a whole bunch of yeah. great, you know, creative weirdos over there. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's great. Lots of little communities, you know. And they used to have, um, oh, who, who do we always get bumped for? New, new Motif? Yeah, those yeah. guys are great. They yeah. were there. Um, I mean, you had the Plymouth Spire for the art, mm-hmm. uh, the Spire Performing Arts Center. Yep, Bob's, Bob Hollis's place. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's just like some, there's really great things going on. I went on. to see Dead Grass. Are you picking up on the Grateful Dead theme? But I went to see uh, Dead Grass the other night. They were this bluegrass band, you know, yeah. like the regional touring, probably just covering all dead music yeah. with bluegrass style, which is great. And they got uh, Vapors of Morphine coming mm-hmm. in, which yeah. I want to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and even Plymouth Memorial Hall's getting in on, on mm-hmm. the act. They get some some notable people in there. And mm-hmm. so, it, yeah, the, if you like the arts, man, it's, yeah. it's, it's a good town it to is. be in. It is. It's great. I love it. Love being downtown. Um, so you said in the past that you have worked with um, places like was it no it's, uh it's now tavern on the wharf i don't remember if you said it was tavern yeah. on the wharf and i'm remembering mm-hmm. it incorrectly yeah. um so do you kind of have plans to do that again this summer like find a right a, so the a, thing that's killing me is you know you got faneuil hall and you got plymouth and plymouth is a lot like that in some ways where but no busking tons of people <laughs> right, that's, honestly that's the thing is like i'm looking around saying why am i not able to set up around here yeah. and you know and then i realized that the dcr controls the park and the you know all that stuff so i started i went to cabby shack and i went to the owners at tavern of the wharf and um and then there was a couple that owned this little ice cream place next to um the shanty there they're not there anymore oh yeah yeah i know yeah, what you're talking they're, about you know yeah. sweet little couple yeah so i just worked and then and then uh ziggy's so i worked it out with them that like when i want to i can go and, and set up like on their property yeah because that makes it okay right right so honestly your question is do i plan to do it this summer i haven't been able to time it right where there's the right flow of traffic yet yeah but i have my whole setup like i bought an umbrella and a you know yeah a couple of chairs and, and that's and that's the hard thing is you know? like when it's busy downtown it's usually like a good weekend yeah. and you'd be mm-hmm. like oh you know yeah i, I want to do something but if too. i could find the right spot man i would <coughs> i think it'd be great and i think it's one of those things that people like you know what i mean i mean i remember being a kid first time i got my character done was in hyannis at that little carousel horse oh, thing. Sure. you yeah. know and uh it's funny i know the no busking rule because after i had done a few conventions yeah. doing caricatures i'm like i wonder if there's something i could do downtown and mm-hmm. i sent off a quick email and they're like no busking and i'm like oh right well don't right. call it busking yeah <laughs> well i didn't but i mean that that's that that was their right, response right. to me yeah. yeah so that's keep you know you got to keep everything under control i guess but you know i know i used to play music in the boston common as soon as i knew like enough chords to do a song i would yeah. go out there and 
bring, open up my guitar case and there's something about that experience too of just singing out or drawing out in public you know what i mean it's like it just takes something you know you just gotta set your own shit aside and just do it and, yeah um and it, it's very trial by fire kind of learning is. yeah it is uh it's nerve-wracking the first mm-hmm. few times mm-hmm. um I remember the first time I put my art out for sale at a comic con, I was very nervous and it took me, I don't know, almost the, you know, six months to a year of doing it off and on before I kind of even felt comfortable to the mm-hmm. point where people would give me a compliment and I would not be like, no, it's not good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're unselling your work. Yeah. 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 I don't want to buy that. That sucks. Let me just throw that away. That's good for you. I think yeah. that's a great, I mean, the very first time I had to draw in public was that company sent me up to, I think it was like the Liberty Tree Mall or something like in Danvers or maybe it was over the New Hampshire border or something. And, uh, you know, they're like, here's what you do. You know, you go there, you set up your easel and you open up the cart. And I sat there, you know, it's like a probably like a Wednesday at like 10 a.m. Like no one's in the mall. And what the hell am I doing in the mall? Yeah. And I just sat there and nothing was happening. And I see this guy just kind of wandering around. Eventually he comes over and says, oh, yeah, you can draw me. And uh, he sat down, and I got so nervous and so freaked out that I got up from the easel and just walked into, like, the gap across the... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> until he left. Yeah. I couldn't bring myself to draw him. Uh. <laughs> and I almost feel like when you are s- sitting there, it's almost better to uh, find something to draw. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, even if you're just drawing your kid or, or something else, mm-hmm. it kind of... It, keeps you occupied mm-hmm. but at the same time then people walk up and gives them something to kind oh, of you know, get their attention yeah. yeah we would use shills like you know ha- draw one of the other artists and then yeah. when someone sees that happening they they come in and get drawn yeah yeah, yeah. Uh. so yeah it, it's um it's a unique experience to mm-hmm. draw live like that mm-hmm. um favorite place to do it is it Daniel Hall um, no, I think I like weddings. Yeah. Weddings are just great. You know, everybody's in a good mood and, you know, feeling good. I think that's my, uh, that's what I'm really focused on now is, is the wedding scene. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, talk about, you know, great things. There's the 1620 winery up the road, not the oh, wine sure. bar, but yeah, the, yeah. the winery. Yep. And, uh, that's like a wedding reception venue yep. and it's beautiful. I mean, yeah, I think it I've heard that. The, I haven't seen it yet. The mill, the mill store, I think it yep. was. And they, totally read it anyway so they had like a wedding expo and i went there and exhibited and uh hopefully i'll be getting some gigs there and i work at pine hills and nice um yeah it's good and um any last minute hints for any of our aspiring artists who maybe don't do it you know what's (laughs) funny is like people say that and it's almost one of those i feel like it's valid yeah because if if someone telling you not to do it is going to stop you from doing it then you shouldn't be doing it that's right that's you know that's it that's the that's the moral of the story. Don't do it if you don't want it. Yeah. And uh, where can they go online to find you? Yeah, it's uh, thecaricatureguy.com. And uh, caricature, let's see, can you spell caricature? Off the top of my head? No. <laughs> I am a, the, the worst at spelling. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, it, it's it's not an easy uh, word. Yeah, it's yeah. C-A-R-I-C-A-T-U-R-E. Show off. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So it's on all my all my business cards. <laughs> so you've been practicing in a while. That, that doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, uh, you can ask fish. I can't spell anything. Uh, <laughs> Spelling's overrated. 44 years I got my name down. That's about it. Yeah. So, um, no, I'm glad you reached out to us, and mm-hmm. uh, you're welcome. Yeah. We'll definitely get you on again. And, yeah, it was uh, fun. Yeah, it's been looking forward to seeing you at our events. So right. I think yeah. Be great. Me too. Anywhere there's naked people, I'll be there. <laughs> okay. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That was fun. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Uh, Don't forget to check out our other podcasts. Uh, There's the Bar Talk podcast. There's Old Colony cast. And, of course, the Inebriar podcast along with Jam Packed. Um, You can find all those on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. Um, If you're on some sort of service and you can't find it, let us know and we'll help you out and or add our podcast to that too. Um, you can contact us at inebriart at yahoo.com and follow us on Facebook as well as Twitter at inebriart. And feel free to send us some um, tips, ideas, advice, hate mail, whatever it is. You can get us there. And again, thanks for listening.